And the last one we'll talk about that changes allele frequencies is sexual selection. This is one that Darwin hinted at in his later writings. So first he talked about natural selection. Um, he had noticed that many traits were preserved generation after generation, but they didn't seem to fit the model of natural selection because they didn't seem beneficial to survival odds. But fitness isn't just about survival. It's about passing on your genes. It's about reproduction. And in order to reproduce, you must attract a mate. So we've got lots of examples of this in birds, but one of the showiest examples is the peacock. And so peacocks grow a huge plume of feathers, and they are very heavy, the feathers. They're likely to attract the attention of predators. They make it harder to fly, um, to escape predation, but in order to mate to attract the attention of females, they have to have this plumage, and so they maintain these heavy, predator-attracting feathers generation after generation. Um, why? There's a lot of re possible reasons why, and there's a lot of research being done into this, but um, it probably signals health and strength to females to be able to carry and create this plumage is very energy inefficient, so they have to be able to um, gather a lot of food and, you know, be strong and dominant. Um, there have even been some studies that show that stronger immune responses in some species of birds, um, you, you can, like, kind of tell how the quality of the immune system in the bird based on the coloration of the feathers. So if they're eating a lot of, you know, carotenoids and, you know, other, uh, like, phytochemicals that would help their immune system. They are brightly colored. That color shows in their feathers, and birds are attracted to that. So you could artificially enhance the diet of some of these male birds to make them a brighter color, and the females are attracted to those artificially... They're not artificially colored. They were fed better food, and the females go for those males. So, um... A bright color comes from a healthy diet, and the diet improves their immune system, and so the females change their mating preferences, possibly based on this sign that the male is healthy and strong. Um, and so sexual selection is another powerful changer of allele frequencies, um, and if mating preferences were to change or mating behaviors were to change, that could very quickly alter the the pattern in allele frequencies. And speaking of patterns of change in allele frequencies, these selection patterns, there's a number of them observed in nature. So I've I've kind of just drawn a standard bell curve here for you to represent a a basic amount of phenotype variation. And the first type of selection that I'm going to show you looks like this, where the, the bell curve gets tighter, and that is stabilizing selection, and that's the pattern that tends towards the mean, where future generations mostly look like the most common phenotype. Um, one of these in humans is birth weight. Um, there's a pressure towards that middle range of birth weights because being too light or too heavy when you're born can decrease your survival odds, and so that is an example of stabilizing selection, a, a force towards the mean. Directional selection, it um, implies what it sounds like, it's pushing off to one direction or the other, shifting towards an extreme phenotype, and a great example of that is the necks of giraffes. So natural selection, for a long time, favored, and you can see in the fossil record, longer and longer necks because it gave you an advantage, or the giraffe's advantage, to gathering food. But there was a point that was reached where selection became stabilized, so it shifted more towards the mean, um, because at some point you reach a neck length where the muscles just simply can't support that neck, or it puts you at risk for easier breakage. And so directional selection can often shift towards one extreme, but as you reach the, you know, optimal 
uh, phenotype, then the selection begins to be stabilizing. And finally, this strange pattern here where you have the two extremes favored, sort of, but it's more about the mean not being favored. So that is disruptive selection, and that tends to happen if the environment has two different types of habitat or two different food sources. For example, beak shape. Um, if a tiny beak is well adapted to small seeds and a large beak is adapted to a completely different seed that's maybe um, larger and a tougher seed, harder to crack, then selection is going to favor the two extremes. But intermediate beaks don't have any particular specialized food source. So um, they're kind of stuck being, you know, less good at accessing both sorts of food. And so selection favors the extremes and does not favor the middle phenotype. And that's disruptive selection. So you've got five major things changing allele frequencies and that causes all of these patterns in nature and so many more but these are the classics, these are the most commonly observed, and that's where we're going to end today.